Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. From the outside, Ali Abdul looked like he had it all together. He'd aced his way through medical school at Cambridge University and was now working as a junior doctor in the UK's National Health Service, or NHS by day and a YouTuber by night. Except, as one Christmas day spent on call clearly demonstrated, he didn't. Until then, the secret behind Abdul's impressive suite of achievements was, actually, no secret at all, he was just very good at adhering to the productivity system so widely espoused in our society, discipline. When the going got tough, Abdul kept going. Enjoyment and well-being stayed on the back burner as he disciplined his way through patient visits, paperwork, and filming, editing, and promoting his video content. Yet, as Abdul struggled to stay afloat during that fateful Christmas Day shift staring blankly at the tray of medical syringes he just dropped while patients and nurses clamored for his attention it struck him that there must be a better way. And it was this exact thought, at this exact moment, that led him to a profound insight he'd come to call feel-good productivity. After diving into the scientific literature and philosophical musings on productivity, Abdul found he needed to flip his understanding of the concept. He discovered that success wasn't the result of some grim, draining hustle, success was a more likely and sustainable outcome of feeling good. In this summary to Ali Abdul's feel-good productivity, you'll find out about the research-backed feel-good productivity manifesto Abdul has developed since then. Crucially, you'll learn about the three forces that can jeopardize your enjoyment and well-being on the road to lasting success and fulfillment low energy, procrastination, and burnout as well as the strategies you can use to overcome each. Finally, you'll be introduced to some fun mini-experiments to get the ball rolling. If, like Abdul, you're striving for the truly enduring kind of success, you need to start putting your enjoyment and well-being first, not last. For Abdul's fellow overachievers, this may take some getting used to. But fortunately, Abdul has a well-tested roadmap ready for you. Chapter 1 Energizers If all this talk of feel-good productivity is sounding a little too woo-woo, fear not. There's actually solid biological science that supports its existence. As mentioned in the introduction, the first force responsible for preventing productivity of both the feel-good and hustle culture variety is low energy. Most often, like many people, you attempt to compensate for your lack of vitality with caffeine, sugar, and other external stimulants as you go about your day. But, as you've no doubt experienced firsthand, these short-term fixes can only do so much. But there's an alternative that's also more sustainable, a cocktail readily available to you at any time, your hormones. Endorphins, dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin all naturally flood your body with the physical and mental energy to accomplish more. And here's the kicker feeling good is what releases them. Fortunately, there are three accessible strategies you can employ to get these feel-good hormones circulating. Abdul calls these the three energizers, play, power, and people. Play points to what you'd expect, injecting more fun and adventure into your days. Yes, life is inherently stressful but not every moment requires straight-faced seriousness. Instead, you can approach life with a spirit of sincerity still caring deeply while allowing space for laughter and lightness. Remember, your life is the quintessential journey. You're supposed to embrace, enjoy, and explore it, not soberly suffer through it. Abdul's second energizer, power, refers to a different type of power than the one you likely think of first. Instead of power over others, this kind of power is power over yourself. It's the sense of personal empowerment in your own life. Personal empowerment can still be attained even if your external circumstances seem to suggest otherwise. For instance, you might not get to choose what you work on in your day job, but you can always choose how you work on it. With a spirit of play, perhaps. The third and final energizer, people, alludes to what you intuitively know, the individuals you spend the most time with matter, both for your mood and productivity. 
The obvious implication is that you need to surround yourself with more cheerleaders than vampires, people who lift you up rather than drain you out. If you don't already have such folk around you, you can lead the charge by modeling a dynamic of camaraderie rather than competition or conflict. At this point, the link between your energy, mood, and productivity should be somewhat clearer, and you've probably got a few ideas as to how you can incorporate more play, power, and people into your daily life. But here are a few of Abdul's mini experiments to throw into the mix. When faced with a tedious or undesirable task, ask yourself, how can I make this fun? When attempting something overwhelming or anxiety-inducing, try, what would this look like if I was the world expert at it? And, when feeling detached or isolated, consider who you could turn to for help on the specific issue. Asking someone for advice or support can, paradoxically, be just as much a gift to them as to you. So although you now have the energy to execute, it still might not be that simple. In the next section, you'll discover what might be blocking this energy from freely manifesting. Chapter 2, Unblockers Procrastination We won't ask for a hand raise, it's something everyone experiences, and, in fact, you may already have encountered it today. As a result, it'll likely come as no surprise that procrastination is the second force that holds people back from sustained productivity and fulfilling their full potential. Typically, there are two solutions to overcoming this formidable foe, discipline Abdul's historic preference and motivation. Where the discipline method encourages you to grin and bear it come rain, hail, or shine, the motivation method advises you to perform fantastic feats of mental gymnastics, somehow mustering passion out of thin air. You've probably experienced these methods working at one time or another, but it's unlikely you've found them to be foolproof strategies. After giving up his discipline-at-all-costs approach, Abdul discovered there was a third way, unblocking. Unlike discipline or motivation, the unblocking method suggests you first identify the root cause of your procrastination and with this insight, address the primary problem head-on. More often than not, you'll find the underlying cause is one of three things, confusion, fear, or inertia. Fortunately, though, you can easily counter each with their opposite, confusion with clarity, fear with courage, and inertia with action. Let's take a closer look at these three pairings. It seems a no-brainer that confusion causes procrastination, but it's very rare to recognize it's simply a lack of clarity rather than a lack of motivation, for example, that's keeping you stuck. Simply taking a minute or two to run through the why, what, how, when, and where of the task or project in front of you can ultimately save you hours. Perhaps less overt is when the underlying cause of your procrastination is fear. After all, most people don't readily admit when they're anxious or scared. And yet, that may be all you need to do simply label your emotional experience. Doing so makes your feelings less ambiguous and intangible, reduces your rumination, and offers you the first glimpse that conquest may be possible. Finally, inertia. The law of inertia an object at rest stays at rest is just as accurate in personal productivity as it is in fundamental physics. The first step towards something hard but worthwhile will always be the most challenging, so keeping the bar low, say, taking action for just five minutes is often, paradoxically, the most effective means of achieving the things that most matter to you. With this knowledge, you may have a few ideas on how you could draw on greater clarity, courage, and action when needed. But, for fun, here are a few mini-experiments from Abdul's personal archives. Need to conjure clarity? Conduct a pre-mortem. Imagine you have a crystal ball and can see how a task or project played out for better or worse. Then, make a plan to tackle the lead dominoes that led to the foreseen success or failure. Call to summon courage? Reflect on the 10-10-10 exercise. Ask yourself how much this fear-inducing event will matter in 10 minutes, 10 weeks, and 10 years. Very few occasions are of the magnitude you initially believe them to be. To inspire action, consider finding yourself an accountability buddy to work toward your goals in tandem. 
As a place to start, Reddit's or Get Motivated Buddies forum has over 179,000 members all looking to do the same. At this point, you should hopefully have the energy to execute and have rooted out the most common blocks. Now it's time to set you up to sustain your inevitable success. Chapter 3. Sustainers A curious thing happened to Abdul a few months after he started living the entrepreneurial life of his dreams. By this time, he'd taken a break from his day job as a junior doctor in the NHS to go all-in as a YouTuber. His efforts quickly paid off. Soon, Abdul was working full-time on the project he loved, was making more money than he could have imagined as a doctor, and was running a small team to help him do it. So why was he planted face down on his sofa, moaning to his mom about his life? He was prioritizing play, power, and people, and was guarding against confusion, fear, and inertia. What was missing? There was one last piece to the feel-good productivity puzzle, sustaining success. The third and final force that keeps people from their full potential is burnout. But, as Abdul was to discover, there was a little more to it than that. In fact, Abdul learned there are actually three distinct breeds of burnout, overexertion, depletion, and misalignment. Though they're typically lumped together under the same, broad burnout umbrella, it aids recovery if you can accurately diagnose which one you're grappling with. In Abdul's case, he was suffering from a little of all three. So, as you've probably guessed, Abdul set about finding a fix for each. Here's where he landed, focusing on conserving when overexerted, recharging when depleted, and realigning when misaligned. After a point, it doesn't matter if you adore what you're doing. If you're overexerted, you're overexerted. So if you're fortunate enough to be in this position, you have to learn to say no to the great so you can say yes to the extraordinary. In a similar vein, burnout can equally arise as a result of how you spend your downtime. If your time away from work isn't truly rejuvenating so you're scrolling social media or mindlessly flicking through Netflix titles you're likely to feel just as depleted as if you've worked a 12-hour day. But perhaps the trickiest type of burnout to identify is misalignment because it's less dependent on the quantitative how many hours you're doing something as it is on the qualitative what you're doing in those hours. It's inherently draining to sustain something that doesn't match up with your values and sense of self. So, to avoid overexertion, try scheduling substantial breaks into your workday. Studies have shown people are better able to commit to what matters with a work-to-break ratio of 52 to 17 minutes. To stop depletion burnout from being your foe, integrate more nature into your downtime. Go for a walk, sit out somewhere green, or, if you really must scroll something online, opt for images of the natural world instead of celebrity selfies. If none of the above hit the spot, misalignment burnout may be the cause. In this case, set aside a few minutes to complete the eulogy exercise. Don't be put off by the morbid-sounding name contemplating death can offer a profound perspective on your life. What would you like your family and friends to say at your funeral? How would you like to be remembered? Compare these answers to your current reality and see whether any small shifts to realign yourself can be made. And there you have it. You're now a newly qualified feel-good productivity scientist. Congratulations! Keep experimenting. It's this creative, curious, and playful mindset rather than any specific strategy that will ultimately enable you to manifest your full potential. Enjoy! Final summary. You need to flip your understanding of productivity. Sustained success isn't the result of some grim hustle. Sustained success comes from feeling good. But unfortunately, you'll likely encounter at least one of the three forces that jeopardize your enjoyment and well-being on the road to success, low energy, procrastination, and burnout. Yet, as you've now learned, you can overcome each by wielding Abdul's energizers, unblockers, and sustainers. There's no need, in fact, it's counterproductive to sacrifice your enjoyment and well-being until you've attained success. Prioritize feeling good now, and success will naturally follow.
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.